everyone, I'm Sosteen. Today we're going to talk about me making the 1950s sailor dress of my dreams. A big thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. So I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that I think I've wanted a sailor dress coming on 25 years now. I always thought they were so, so cute and they have shown up in so much of pop culture growing up, whether it's Sailor Moon's costume, Anastasia's nightmares, Donald Duck, or Victorian swimsuits. In particular, I've always wanted a cuter, vintage-feeling version of the Sailor Girl dress. However, I never quite found a version in an antique store or made by any other company that quite hit the mark for me on every single note. For instance, I loved Vixen by Michelin Pitt's version that came out last year, but I really do avoid shorter sleeves like that, mostly due to self-consciousness about my arms. However, that's when I ran across this pattern on Etsy's recommendation page. It's a vintage pattern by Simplicity, number 4875, that was originally produced in 1954. I loved everything about it from the perfectly proportioned color, the elbow length sleeve, to its full skirt. I knew immediately that I wanted the dress in the same colors, dark blue with a red sash, but I wanted to add some white stripes along the edge since I find the blue with white stripes combo so charming. And yes, I know that's a real military thing, but it's still beautiful. For the fabric, I went ahead and ordered five and a half yards of dark blue fabric. Personally, when I make a 1950s dress, I like fabrics that do have some stiffness and body to it so that the skirt flares out properly and also so that I don't have to flatline the whole project since originally 1950s dresses would be worn with a girdle and since I'm not going to, it will need a little bit more stiffness. In this case, I chose the estate blue stretch cotton poplin from Mood since the color looks so perfect and it does have 5% lycra, which means the fabric will have some stretch to it, a prospect which I like for a more casual dress. For the buttons, I chose these gorgeous textured buttons. I ended up buying them in two sizes, three of the bigger one or five of the smaller one. I did end up going with the bigger. For the neckerchief, I chose a red silk twill, which they no longer have in stock, but if you can't find a red silk twill, I recommend any sort of scarf weight fabrics. Even a charmeuse would be absolutely darling if a pain to hem. Per the envelope instructions, I had to also get a zipper. Personally, I try to avoid invisible zippers whenever I can avoid it because they are just not that strong. I prefer metal zippers, which have a little bit more oomph to it. So I chose this metal one since I thought that the gold made a nice contrast to the navy. And also this meant that I could just check out from one place and have all the stuff. Like for instance, one nice thing about some of these websites is that when you scroll down from any fabric, you can find the matching thread under uh, related objects. So I added two spools of matching thread. I did end up going through most of both of these spools, so I recommend two spools of thread for your project. I then waited till I got the materials. I actually ended up redoing my YouTubing filming studio while I was waiting for this to happen. Since during the pandemic, I spent some time turning my guest bedroom into a YouTube shooting room. Now that daycare has restarted and my husband can occasionally get a full day off now, this also meant that I could occasionally film in other rooms with better lighting again, like this one. So that meant I could turn it back into the bedroom it was meant to be. I love to go antiquing and found this old Art Nouveau bed frame at an antique store. So I decided to turn this room into the Georgian Art Nouveau bedroom. I left at the wall decal view of the Scion house across the Thames near Kew Gardens, which was custom printed for me by Limitless Walls. I put up the bed frame with the help of my husband, got some furniture for the desk. You may recognize the desk as well. For the mattress, I want to thank today's sponsor, Birch Living. So Birch Living is a mattress in a box company that specializes in making organic, non-toxic mattresses made right here in the United States and then mailed to your door that you can just open and have it be fully ready. Moreover, they do so using responsibly sourced and sustainable materials such as organic cashmere, organic New Zealand wool, fair trade cotton, and 100% natural latex. In particular, I'm proud to discuss their new Birch Lux Natural Mattress, which uses cashmere and has over 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils to help support your lumbar region, as well as limit motion transfer, which is helpful when sleeping next to someone more than twice your body weight. But not only is this mattress responsibly made, I love how comfortable it is. Regardless of whether you're a side or a back sleeper, which I am 50-50, it offers fantastic support. Moreover, due to the use of cashmere and breathable materials, it stays cool all night long. 
even my husband who has the sweating gene which i don't have which is atp binding cassette transporter subfamily c member 11 or shortly known as abcc 11 finds the mattress wonderfully comfortable and cooling Personally, I am someone who loves a pillow topped mattress and their soft topper is wonderful. It's just like sinking into a dream. On top of this comfortable mattress, each Birch Lux mattress comes with two of their Eco Rest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles. My husband, who is a face down sleeper, also found it comfortable if you're curious. If you're nervous about buying a mattress you haven't got to try in the store, you can always try their 100 night sleep trial, which means you can try for over three months. And if you don't like it, Birch Living will pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. It's honestly such a comfortable, cool and supportive mattress. I absolutely love sleeping on it. If you have been dreaming about a new mattress, don't wait any longer. Until January 6th, all Birch financing offers are 0% APR. Head to birchliving.com to see if your purchase qualifies for this amazing limited time offer. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash Sostein for $400 off your mattress plus two free pillows. Thank you, Birch Living, for sponsoring this video and for making my room so comfortably soft. Now let's make the sailor dress of my dreams. I first gave the cotton a good wash and tumble dry and iron so that I can machine wash it and tumble dry it later without concern for shrinkage. Something that I find is essential for my house dresses in a home with a toddler for some reason. Meanwhile, I started work on the mock-up. When I purchased the pattern, I bought the one with the 26 inch waist and even the bust was a perfect 32 for me. However, I wanted to see if the mock-up needed any changes since a lot of the 1950s patterns often need a little bit of tweaking. And sure enough, the original pattern had these incredibly deep darts at the front shoulders and at the back shoulders and the back waist. And honestly, it didn't fit me very well at all. In particular, as I said, 1950s dresses are frequently worn with a girdle, so it required the back to be pinched in. Since I had no desire to wear this with a girdle every day, this is gonna be a house dress, I needed to change up the pattern to be without the back darts. To do this, I got some pattern drafting paper and then traced out the pattern. You'll notice that I trace it up to the dart line on the areas where I do not want the darts, and then I move the pattern and omit the dart and draw it without the darts. If it doesn't quite fit, you just kind of fudge it together. It's, you're gonna make a mock up and you'll figure it out. So after I had this, I made a second mock up and tried it on. I did not have to fix it at all, it actually fit perfectly. So now I was ready to turn it into the dress. So I traced out and cut out the pattern pieces for the top, front, back, the facings, and the pockets. Of note, I did lose the back facing pattern piece, so I just cut out the top half of the back again so I could like turn it into the facing later. When putting this together, I decided to follow the directions as closely as possible while not completely following every step if I really didn't want to. So let's just start with step one. Okay, so it says to stay stitch. Okay, I hate st stay stitching. Let's skip to the next part. The second part of step one is to put darts in the front, and I did that. And then it told me to trim the darts. Hmm, I don't really like trimming darts, so I'll skip that part too. Okay, so we're not off to a great start, but you know, I'm sure the directions get better. Step one, part B, stay stitch the armholes, neck and shoulders. Okay, skipping that. Also put darts into the back. Luckily, I already removed those darts, so nothing to do there. I did follow the rest of the step and joined it to the front at the shoulders and the right side. On the left side, I sewed it from the armhole to the dot so that it would have room for the zipper on the side as this is one of those dresses that has buttons that go down from the neck to the waist and then has a zipper on the left side so you can get it on and off. Even though I don't often prefer getting into these dresses this way since I find this to be relatively annoying than just stepping into a dress like say the ones I make, I decided to go with the flow and try it out for this dress since it would be like a first for me to make a dress like this. I then pressed each seam open and then moved on to the next step. Step two, with the right sides together, stitch the collar sections together. I did do that and then turned it inside out with an iron and pressed it.
I did add something extra to this step. Remember how I said I wanted white stripes around the edge? Well, the US military has a sailor uniform that has stripes, but they have three. I felt like that's a lot of stripes to put on, and furthermore, I didn't necessarily want to make this a military costume. Meanwhile, one stripe does, does not look like enough, so I settled in the middle and went with two white stripes. To figure out where to put the tapes, I sewed half an inch from the edge and then one inch from the edge using the marks on my machine plate to guide my stitching so it would be nice and even. Now I had basically a ruler, as well as stitching that would keep this collar nice and stable. I used quarter inch cotton tape from Burnley and Trowbridge and used my sewing machine, a Baby Lock Soprano, to stitch as close to the edge on both sides as possible. The rest of step two is to add it to a neckline of the already sewn bodice, the wrong side of the collar to the right side of the bodice. I did stitch a 3 8 inch from the neckline to tack this on. I was already in love with this dress and had to share it on Instagram. Step three, I made the facing of the bodice, stitching the front to the back at the shoulder seams. The original pattern tells me to hem this and then finish it with some bias binding, but I elected to just serge the edge instead with my baby lock victory since that's faster and does the same things. Afterwards, I stitched this to the bodice along the front end to the color, matching up the right sides together. This was stitched with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. This was then turned right side out, ironed to look as nice and clean as possible, and then I tacked this in place. The original pattern asked you to tack down the facing at just the shoulder seams, but I actually chose to tack down the entire piece on the front and the back using a herringbone stitch, which gives a lot of movement while still giving a lot of strength and holding the facing in place. Step four, it says to tack the bodice together in the front. I decided not to do this yet since I want to make sure it fits the shoulder well once I add the sleeves. In fact, I decided to save myself some bother later and add the sleeves in now since it's much easier to add in sleeves when the bodice doesn't have a heavy skirt attached. So I ended up ignoring the, the actual instructions yet again and skipped ahead to step nine. So step nine, to make the sleeve, I cut out the pattern and transferred all the dark markings with a chalk pen by bone. I then folded them up and sewed them, and then knotted the ends down by hand using surgical knots rather than doing the back and forth method, which can be a little bit more obtrusive. I could have sewn the sleeve together then, but I want to add the sleeve trim in first. I marked the lines where I wanted the trim with my chalk pen and stitched down two rows of quarter inch cotton tape to match the neckline.
I then matched up the sleeve and sewed it together. I folded in the inside hem of the sleeve and used a whip stitch to sew down the inside hem right where the trim is so that it would not show. I added the sleeve to the armhole, matching up the notch in the back carefully and then easing the fullness of the shoulder to a piece manually. The directions say to use gathering stitches, I, this is just how I like to do the sleeve. Once this was all done, I tried it on to make sure that the bodice fit well. It did, which I am not showing for modesty reasons, and then it was time to add in the skirt. So now let's go back to step four. I basted the front of the bodice together with the overlap I wanted in the center front, which I figured out by putting it on my dress form. Meanwhile, I measured out how long I wanted the skirt to be, which I figured out to be 23 inches. I added in two inches for the hem and half an inch for the top seam allowance for a total of 25.5 inches. The actual skirt pattern piece they give you is much longer than this, but that's why the pattern itself tells you to figure out how long you want the skirt to be. The fabric they suggest being 55 inches wide, but since my fabric was only 44 inches wide, I ended up going lengthwise to cut two pieces of fabric, 55 inches by 25.5 inches. I also cut out the four pockets. Normally, I sew up my skirts with pockets differently from these instructions, but since I wanted to try to follow the instructions as much as I felt like it, I thought I'd try something new and put the skirt together their way this time. So with that in mind, let's move on to step five. They tell me to sew the sides of the skirt together from the hem up to the marked dots at the sides where the zipper and the pockets will go. I then hem the bottom of the skirt two inches as recommended. I did want to put two stripes along the bottom of the skirt, but the quarter inch tape just looked really puny. I tried the half inch tape the next and I thought it was a little bit too thick. So I sent out some texts with my friends to ask for a suggestion. Morgan Donner liked the two thicker ones, but Angela suggested one of each. And I loved that suggestion. So I went with that. I honestly would never have thought of it otherwise. I pinned and sewed these two down before I moved on to the next step. Six, adding the pockets for the right side, which is the side without the zipper, they have you sew the pockets onto both sides of the skirt above the marked dots where you haven't sewn the side together yet, right side to right side. And then you turn the pocket inwards and iron it down and then sew the two sides of the pocket together to make the pocket. For the left side, you want the pocket only in the front since you will have a zipper behind this. So to do this, I sewed one of the pocket pieces to the front of the skirt side, the right side to right side. I then folded the pocket backwards and then seamed the other pocket section along the curved edge. I then gathered up the top of the skirt using two rows of gathering stitches done by a machine and then gathered it up by hand.
Step seven, I pin this gathered skirt to the bodice and stitch the two together within 5 8 inch seam allowance twice for strength. Step eight, now is adding in the zipper. Personally, I don't like adding zippers with a sewing machine. It causes me a lot of anxiety just because when, it, when you mess up, it looks so bad. Since I do sewing as a hobby to minimize anxiety, I just decided to avoid it altogether and I got my 12 inch zipper and pinned it to the left side where there was this appropriately sized gap already made. I then pinned it down and basted it with some large hand stitches. I then did a space back stitch, eight stitches to the inch to sew down the zipper by hand. I love how a hand stitch zipper looks to be honest. It's so pretty and it's almost invisible and no wrangling a zipper with a zipper foot and it took maybe 30 minutes for the whole thing. Now, there was just the finishing of the dress. For the buttons, the pattern recommends either hand or machine buttonholes. However, honestly, I just didn't feel like fiddling around my buttonhole foot. So what I chose to do was put in hooks and eyes and then cover up that stitching with my large buttons. So it's faux buttons. I did flirt with using smaller buttons, as I said, but I just love the look of the larger buttons. They just had such great texture. So I went with that one instead. And meanwhile, I cut out the scarf pattern on the almost bias since I didn't have quite enough fabric to make it full bias and then stitched the edge together with a felled stitch. This is where I sew the two together with a quarter inch seam allowance and then iron the wrong sides together and then enclose the raw edge in a 3 8 inch seam. Now everything is enclosed. I then hem the raw edges by folding it over twice as close to the edge as possible. I then use the whip stitch around 6 to the inch to sew the edge down by hand. I tried this on and then the dress was done. Honestly, when I first started this project, I totally forgot that this is really similar to what Donald Duck wears. And this is really exciting since we're going to Disney World for my son's third birthday. And I didn't really have any Disney bounding outfits ready, but I felt so special wearing this to Disney World. And I know that this pairs really well with a pair of black patent heels, but I chose to wear mine with some low wedged ones and a bag shaped like a whale from Wicker Darling to keep with the nautical theme. I got myself a little sailor hat trimmed with some black jacket ribbons from St. James.com and that was my outfit. All in all, the dress is so wonderfully comfortable and easy to get in and out of, which was really surprising since I had some misgivings about the side zipper and the buttons. The little bit of stretch in the cotton makes a world of difference when you're getting in and out of the stress. The whole outfit is fantastically comfortable and I had a ton of fun romping around in it. As usual, making one of these is giving me absolute fantasies of making more sailor dresses. Perhaps I'll make the white one with bishop sleeves that Anastasia wears in her nightmare with Rasputin. It really looks like Mew Mew already beat me to it, but like I really like how hers looks, so I may just make hers next. So that's it. Thanks again for watching. I linked all my supplies down below so you can make your own if you're interested. If you like this video, please remember to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you want to join me on more sewing adventures. Next time I will be making a 1780s waistcoat, but one featuring my dogs.